On today's video, we have got a dirty nitro. Dirty, dirty nitro. Dirty. And this is a nitro powered drift street car from FTX. It's the Banzai. The electric version of the Banzai is really good. People are going to argue with you it's not a drift car because it's four wheel drive, but don't worry about all that. The Banzai is a really good platform. And if you swap the drift tires out for normal road tires, it makes a good like touring car. But Nitro just makes things a little bit more interesting for a few reasons. Obviously the sound and the smoke just makes them a little bit more enjoyable to watch than the electric ones. But all this here takes a little bit more maintenance and a little bit more care. If you're looking for just like plug in and play, Nitro's probably not for you. I'm not a huge fan of Nitro, I just think just the maintenance and stuff, it's just not, I don't know, it's not me. I prefer to plug stuff in and go and play without having to fiddle about with it and try and tune it and stuff. But lots of people like that and I can understand why. Instructions, I usually throw these away, but for this, if you've not had a Nitro before, you are going to have to read this carefully so you know what you're doing. Don't throw it away. Oh. So it comes in blue and that kind of white and pink. That's quite funky, isn't it? But it's not quite that blue. It's actually a little bit nicer. It's more like a baby blue. I think we need to adjust that body straight out of the box. Raising up. I'm sure there's pins holding it, so it just needs raising up. And yeah, it is a nice drift style looking body. Straight away what I've seen, it's got normal like road tires, like rubber. The electric one comes with plastic wheels. Not these are plastic like drift wheels. Comes with one similar to this, but they're plastic for drifting. Or power sliding. But this one comes with road tires. Nitros usually have a hole in the body for cooling. This doesn't. I mean, it's obviously going to affect the temperatures in there, but whether that's going to be a problem, I don't know. It looks exactly the same as the electric one, apart from it's got a different spoiler on it. That's a little bit flatter than that one. Nice number plate. Yeah, so simple fix on that body. Get them up one or up two. Here it is underneath. A little bit different to what I'm used to. So you've got throttle servo there, steering servo there. That's where your receiver, your receiver will be in there. Where the area is, we'll have to have a look at that. There's your brake in there. Obviously being nitro, you don't have any reverse on this one. So that's your brake there. A little fuel tank there, exhaust. And there is your nitro engine. This is a single speed. You can get a two speed conversion. Pull start, oil shocks, adjustable camber and tow and adjustable camber. Something at this price point, I think this is I'm going to say probably one of the cheapest nitro like road cars you can buy in the UK anyway. Metal drive shafts, front and rear, You've got your centre drive shafts going through there. That's not a diff, even though it looks like it may be a centre diff, it hasn't got a centre diff. That is a Force 0.18 uh, nitro motor there, shiny metal pipe, metal chassis. Now I am going to question something. It does say 95% ready to run. I'm going to say it's probably more than 90%. You need eight double A's, you need nitro fuel, you need a fuel bottle and you need a glow starter. So 95, mm, I'd say 90. That's being picky though. Right, the boring stuff. But the important stuff, as it says here, you must read the engine running in guidelines and set up on pages nine and 12 before trying to start your engine. Paragraph here kind of sums everything up about nitros. The key to braking in your engine is patience. During the braking period, your engine may appear to malfunction with problems such as stalling, inconsistent performance, fouling out glow plugs. Don't give up. And that's one of the reasons I'm not a massive fan of them is because you do actually have to do stuff. You can't just charge a battery and go and play. But like I said, lots of people out there love Nitro. I don't, but we're going to do this properly. I think it says about six tanks, I think, to run it in properly. So yeah, I suppose we best start. So the first start did take a while. I've kind of cut this down a little bit, but it did take a good few attempts. I, I warmed it up a little bit of a blowtorch as well because it's freezing at the moment. But I did get it started and on the first tank, I literally just let it run at a fast idle. So as you can see, wheel spin around quite quick. I didn't adjust the throttle. I, I notched the throttle down a little bit, but I didn't go all the way down. I just let it at fast idle for a bit. I ran it around the unit for a little bit, just a few little blips. And that's all I did for that first tank. But 
I cut a hole for the exhaust because I think you definitely need a hole for the exhaust in this. I don't know why it's been missed off. And then I used a scalpel or an X-Acto knife, whatever you want to call it, and I cut pretty much half of the windscreen. Made a nice neat cut there. That allows you to refuel it. It doesn't allow you to start it without taking the body off, but I did cut a hole, let some air in, keep some cooling in there. That was my choice. You might get away with not doing it, but I'd say, especially in the hot weather, it's probably, it's probably something you need to do. Second tank, about 60% maybe throttle. Maybe a little bit too much for some people, but basically I was just doing a figure of eight. I checked that the brakes work, and I'd just done that for the second tank. Third tank, increased a little bit more, maybe 60 to 70% throttle. Again, it's quite hard to tell because the throttle comes onto full quite soon on these, as I realized afterwards, but 60 to 70%. Tank four, again, increased it a bit more and I was doing more sort of straight line stuff and then just up and down for tank four. Now that's four tanks through it. Now something to think of, think of them as heat cycles rather than tanks. You can't just keep topping the tank up as it's running and run it through like that. You need to stop it, let it cool down and then run it through again. So it's heat cycles you're really looking at. We've done four. I think it's time now to take the body off and clean it. Imagine if I didn't put that hole there. All of this would all be up inside there. To take the body off, just have a look over it. We've got a wobbly wheel there. It looks like the wheel nuts just come loose. So a quick look over it. That's with the hole. You can see it's a bit messy. Now, I didn't have any proper air filter oil. You can see how much dirt it's picked up. I just put a really thin coating of WD on there. That's just gonna grab all the dirt. I'll give that a clean off as well. They do say you may need to change this, but I'm no expert, but I think that looks in pretty good health. So you're just gonna check all my wheels, check nothing's coming loose on it. Give it a quick blast with some air. Get rid of all the dust and dirt. Get an old cloth or something on it. So I gave the filter a quick clean, so a bit of soapy water, make sure it's completely dry. And then once it's all dry, a bit of WD. Well, that's what I'm doing, but you can get special, you can get special oil. Bit of WD on there, fill her up. And now we're ready for the last two before we can properly let it rip. Tank five, sort of 80%, and then on to tank six, I hit full throttle a few times. <laughs> and as you've probably heard already through this whole running in process, these things are so noisy. I always forget how noisy they are. So now we've run the packs for it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I might have to do a voice over it. But now we've run the six tanks for it. You need to lean it out. You're meant to lean it and then run another six tanks through, but it's running fine. I've run it in quite fast. So we're gonna lean it out. And we're gonna see what sort of speed we got. Just gonna turn it off a minute. So I'm gonna use the GPS to see what speed we got straight out of the box on stock settings before we lean it. Uh, and then we can adjust it and we should see an increase in speed. You need to use your eyes and your ears as well to listen for it, to listen for that change in uh, note uh, and look for smoke. You need a nice, I think you need like a, you don't need too much smoke, but not too little. We'll just let it warm up a minute. Oh, this is why I love nitro. <laughs> Right, let's see what we got straight out of the box. That's full throttle. Do that one more time, just to keep it warm. Thirty-two mile an hour. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so basically I was doing about an eighth of a turn at the time and it's just, it's just a repeat process. We 
we didn't increase our max speed more than 34 mile an hour. I probably could have leaned it out a little bit more because it was still a little bit smoky, but if you speak to people that are a little bit more knowledgeable than me, you'll probably get a good idea of what you should be seeing, what you should be hearing. But I was happy with it how it ran, a little bit rich still, but I think whilst you're still, whilst the engine's still new, I think you need to run a little bit richer anyway. So that's the high done. I don't think we're gonna get any more than that. Now we've got to do the low, which is when you pull away, when it bogs down, when you go full throttle. Although this, <laughs> I don't think we need to touch it. There's no bog, <laughs> there's no bogging down there at all. I'm happy with the low speed. This launch as well. And now I'm going to leave you with the sweet sound of nitro. And I'm not going to lie, it was good fun. Just the noise, the noise and the smoke is awesome. Although the noise, the noise after six, seven, eight tanks in quite close proximity, I think I'd, I was about done when I finished. This thing is nuts. <laughs>